Nebraska is still in the midst of soybean aphid season. The pest thrives in temperatures between 75 and 80 degrees, while weather above 90 degrees hinders and can even reduce its development. Under ideal conditions, soybean aphid populations can double in two to three days. As we first told you in April 2013, Tom Hunt is part of a group looking to incorporate aphid tolerance into a soybean variety. At a recent Nebraska Soybean Board sponsored field day in Auburn, we talked with Tom again and asked him for an update on that work. Well, we were working with a line we got from Kansas, KS4202, and this was a line of soybeans that aphids would build up on, but the, the line could tolerate a lot of insect injury without having a large yield hit. So instead of getting 30 to 35 percent yield reductions, you might get 13 percent max. And so we thought this is an opportunity to look at this bean and maybe move it into uh, breeding lines. And why did you think that would help farmers? Because there's no resistance. They might still have to treat. Yes, this isn't immunity at all, but what happens is a lot of times farmers, they either get in there late and the aphids are already built up to high numbers, you're already getting yield loss, or what often happens, the spur applicator can't get there for a week, and you can lose 10, 15, 20 percent in a week and a half if the guy can't get there. So this way, if there were delays, you wouldn't suffer such a hard hit. The other thing you might be able to do is then put antibiotic genes, like you've heard of maybe the RAG genes, aphid-resistant genes in certain soybean lines. Well, aphids overcome these in a few years, but I think if we put these genes in these tolerant lines, as the aphids would get over, start to overcome the RAG gene, well then they, again, you wouldn't suffer a big yield hit. You'd have more time to deal with the crop. You'd have more time to get more genes into some of our lines. And so it would just kind of buffer the process and the farmer wouldn't suffer when bad things happen. Can you tell me more about how the plant is able to handle more aphids without getting that damage right away? Well, we're not sure of the complete mechanism. It looks like some peroxidase genes are involved and some other um, mechanisms of the plant that the plant uses to defend against insect pests and even maybe disease disease pests. And so what happens sometimes these mechanisms can in, after a while cause some cell death and problems of their own. So what the uh, this plant is able to do is to buffer those responses so they don't become severe later. And so the aphids can thrive and then the plant doesn't suffer very much. So that's basically now, it. You're working with uh, George Graff who works at UNL as well as a plant breeder to try and incorporate this into a line that would be commercial avail commercially available, yes? Yes, this is a line that Tiffany Hang Moss and I have been working with a few years with various students, and now we have a student, Leah Markey, that is working with George Graff to incorporate this into his breeding program. Because finding a line that's interesting is one thing, but get, it's got to get to the public, and that's where peep, the breeders come in. If it doesn't get to a breeder, then what does it mean? And so George is now working with that to incorporate, put it into his high yielding lines, maybe some anti, some disease resistance, and maybe and, and also some of those rag genes, those antibiotic resistance to soybean aphids. So we hope have have great hopes for that. Do you see this as something that could be used in any region of Nebraska, or do you think it's something that would have to be used in a specific growing area? I think it's something if you, it could be used in any region. If you're developing some lines that are whatever group, whatever region, um, these would be good lines. It's a good yielding bean as it is, but uh, it's the type of thing that would be nice for, for pretty much any region. And there's probably other lines out there that are tolerant. So the other nice thing about this is Tiffany's lab is also looking at the genes involved, so maybe then we can screen some other lines to see similar types of tolerance in other lines, and then they can go into other breeding programs for other regions. Now, uh, one of the questions, and maybe you don't know, but uh, are there any trade-offs to putting this into a line? Uh, we haven't seen that yet, and that's exactly what Leah and George are looking at also in their uh, breeding program. She's doing a lot of work in the greenhouse right now. Eventually, then it'll come out to the field where it'll be up in northeast Nebraska, but that's one of the things we're looking at. But so far, it doesn't look like there's a problem there. This work is funded by the North Central Soybean Research Program, a multi-state collaboration which invests soybean checkoff funds. The Nebraska Soybean Board contributes to this program. For more information on scouting and treating aphids, you can view our interview with Bob Wright from the August 8th episode of Market Journal.